Hey, welcome. This is the Brainwash Show. I am your host, executive producer, all the different hats. I wish I had a hat with me, <laughs> Damon Brown. I'm a business coach. I'm an uh, author many times over. And my goal is to help you uh, with your side hustlers, hustles, with your solopreneurship, um, with you creating something out of nothing. And it's something that uh, a lot of folks that I've worked with, I've worked with hundreds of people over the years, probably approaching thousands, and trying to help you elevate your game. Um, if you know, if you don't know my background, my uh, background is journalism. And then I became an entrepreneur at the exact same time that my wife and I had our first kid. I'm the primary caregiver. And so at the time that my our first son was uh, about three or four months old, I decided to go full throughout onto entrepreneurship and then doing two startups, the second one called Cuddler. And I'm getting really popular. We had about a quarter million users and we ended up selling it uh, about a year later around the time of my son's second birthday. And since then, I've been dedicated to helping other folks that look like me, that uh, don't look like me, that um, don't pattern match, as we say in Silicon Valley, into what the successful entrepreneur is. So helping you get to the next level. Um, you could have little kids at home. You could be part of marginalized communities. Um, you could be part of the LGBTQ community. Um, you could be uh, have less resources because of who you are and how you show up, or more importantly, who you're trying to serve. My goal is to give you the toolboxes, open up my toolbox, and give you all the insight that I can. So I come to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at uh, 1, 11 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, Vegas time, because I'm over here in Las Vegas. This is about 300, 320th episode. We were going in. Uh, the community has gotten really big since the beginning of this year. And um, yeah, I'm just happy to, to be connecting with y'all and that some of this stuff is resonating. If you're interested in getting these vibes three times a week, as well as the shorts that I do, which I do almost every day, be sure and subscribe. It's totally free. It will, as far as I can tell, always be free. Just click the link below at youtube.com slash brown damon slash that little thing there. If you don't want to subscribe, you just want to check out the show, just do youtube.com slash brown damon. You can check out all the episodes. I think there's a couple hundred shorts on there, which are like kind of like TikTok, where it's like less than 60 seconds talking about some of the stuff I'm talking about here, including uh, passive income, including um, emotional balance, emotional intelligence. And some stuff we're talking about today, which delves into care and how you can lead while still being yourself. Really important. Um, my latest book is Career Remix, Get the Gig You Want with the Sales You've Got. If you're on Amazon, shout out to you, y'all at Amazon Live. You just go and click the link on that side. <laughs> They're always moving the links. It's somewhere around my, my talking head. If, if you're on the YouTube channel, if you're listening or what have you, just go into the show notes, usually right below my head, and all the links that you uh, will hear about today, you will uh, you will figure out. Um, there's a, and so today, sorry, I'm having a technical issue here. Give me one second. There we go. All right, and this kind of gets into the most important stuff. Today is a Q and A. So every Wednesday, I have a Q and A. Um, and it's talking about a particular topic that relates to us as solopreneurs, us as what I call non-traditional entrepreneurs. So people that are going against the grain based on who they are, based on the amount of resources they have, based on who they're trying to support. Today, we're talking about to how to lead as an introvert. Um, I talk a lot. <laughs> Speaking is part of my profession. I've done four TED Talks and I think I approach it like 100 speaking engagements. And actually, I'm an introvert. Like I, I enjoy the quiet of my own company as my family can attest to <laughs> those that raised me as well as the family that I created with my two little kids now and my wife. Introverts are interesting. And I don't say that just because I'm an introvert, but because we have such a different take um, in the world. Uh, based on statistics that I, I was able to look up earlier this week, one out of three of us is an introvert. So if it was three of us in the room, me and two of y'all, I would be the introvert more than likely, right? So that's a pretty high, pretty high um, ratio, if you want to call it that, a pretty high, pretty high statistic. The thing is, is that we tend to move around the world differently. Now, the key thing is that at least when I was growing up, being an introvert, that term 
wasn't really defined the way it is defined now. And shout out to Susan Cain and other folks that I'm going to dig up their work in a moment. Folks who really started that discussion as far as the difference between being an extrovert and an introvert. And if you think about like the Mad Men days, which was the people on Madison Avenue, the um, the popular uh, AMC TV show that was that was hot about 15 years ago with Don Draper and all those guys. It goes back into a little bit of an interesting history. And if you look to the history of, of being an introvert, and I think Susan Kane might talk about this a bit too, but other folks have, have, have done that and I've done some of the research where people actually were fine being reserved and being quieter until about a century ago. So let's say the early 1900s, around the time of the, the, the real heft of the industrial revolution we're talking uh, assembly lines. We're talking uh, the Model T, right? We're talking about the Rockefellers and the, um, the Carnegies and all these different folks where things got really industrial, let's say 1910, 1915. So again, just over 100 years ago. And suddenly these people who, meaning most of us, um, we were used to being in these rural areas then the suburbs started to come into play. And the suburbs, as you can imagine, if you break down the word, are just um, a separate part of the urban area. Suburban, right? Suburban, a subset of the urban areas. Everyone was going to these urban areas. If you think of New York, you think of Chicago, you think of uh, Vegas to a lesser extent, but it wasn't until later because of the mafia presence. That's a whole different thing. <laughs> There's people that are way more knowledgeable about it than I am. But these major cities, Los Angeles, um, et cetera, especially on the East Coast and the Midwest, because those, those areas are a little bit more developed, that people started to go to these cities to make money. If you're in these urban areas, you have to be a lot more, frankly, aggressive. I'm originally from South Jersey, so I get some of that. So you have to be a little bit more aggressive. You have to be outspoken. You have to have a loud presence. You have to be an ex extrovert or at least pretend to be an extrovert. That's the energy that you end up seeing and again, the popular show Mad Men, which is about the ad agencies that took place in the 50s. If you follow me, the challenge is that now we're at this place where people who are like myself, who actually do need alone time or who are quieter or what have you, they feel as though they need to act a certain way in these environments to lead, right? So if they feel as though they have to act a certain way to lead, at a certain point, the mask is going to start to fall off. As they say in psychology, right? Shout out to Young. <laughs> the mask starts to fall off. And then suddenly you're burnt out. Then suddenly you feel like an imposter. You hear the discussion about imposter syndrome. Some of that comes from us feeling like we have to appear a certain way to succeed in the world. There's a certain amount of masking that happens in the world, right? You can't be 100% yourself all the time. There's a certain rawness that I have with like my wife or my best friends or with my closest family members I wouldn't have with you because I don't know you, right? But that gap though, because of again, these this historical stuff, particularly here in the States over the past hundred years, that gap has gotten wider. Again, Susan Cain addresses that in her books. Um, other folks have addressed that. We're gonna get into that. What I wanna really help us understand though is that we can be introverts. We can be our true selves or at least more of our true selves, and still get amazing shit done. It's possible. I've done that. The people that I've coached have done that. It's not like I have a magic formula. It's just having the confidence and figuring out the tools to make that happen. So today, the Q&A is completely open. I'm going to go ahead, and there's always some, already some questions queued up. I'm going to go pull those up. Throw in your questions. Um, you, as um, if you want to be a public speaker, as I am, um, a professional one at least, um, if you want to do your startups or you're already doing your startups, if you're trying to lead your family or lead a group, like there's this confusion there as far as like what it represents. And thank you. That's exactly what I'm getting at. Introversion does not mean shy. Along that whole path, there was this blend of introvert means shy. Personally, I'm not shy at all. <laughs> like people that know me know I'm not shy. But I do need my alone time, and there's a difference. So one of the questions that came in, let me go ahead and pull that up. Um, 
Again, hopefully the technology will cooperate with me. So bear with me. Again, change the new technology. There it is. All right. So let's start with the, the basics here. Uh, oh, I'm hiding too much stuff. See, I, I told you. <laughs> there it is. What is introvert? What is introvert? So let's start with the, with the baseline. My definition that I've gotten over the years, and this has evolved. Um, shout out to Adam Grant, who's had some recent definitions about introversion and extroversion and so forth. There's, it's evolving. But let's start with like a simple baseline since you know we have like a half an hour show. It is where you get the energy from. So my youngest is an extrovert, super extrovert. My wife is an extrovert. So for them, silence and just being by themselves, that feels draining to them. What's exciting is to go out into the world or have a conversation or play music, even though we're all into music, but you, you hear where I'm going, like just to have that commotion, almost like a stimulation. They need that stimulation. That's what gets them energy. It's almost like a battery pack and that gets them the energy back, right? For my eldest, the uh, the one I was talking about earlier that that um, that was there for the those big stages with I was doing my startups. He and I are similar in that we actually like quiet. Like I'm there's always that thing where it's like, oh, my gosh, if I was on a desert island, I'd go crazy. I'm like, I'd miss everybody. But that sounds kind of nice. <laughs> and my eldest has a similar energy. And that's because we get our energy. We we get our composure when we have our quiet time. I talked about this in my newsletter today. I have a, a newsletter every Wednesday. It's at joindamon.me, joindamon.me, completely free. And it's uh, delivered at 5.55 a.m. Pacific Standard Time every Wednesday. I talked about that in the newsletter today, getting, you know, getting ready for the Q&A. And for me, it was when I was in college and I stretched myself really thin, as most people do in college. I guess if you're going to stretch yourself thin, college is the time. And I found myself on the verge of burnout. In fact, I might have been burned out already. And I realized part of it was I wasn't saying no to social things because I thought I had to do everything. And in fact, when I actually allowed myself to go back to my dorm room and, and to pay an extra to get a single <laughs> so I didn't have a roommate, like there's certain things that I, that I was like, I need to do this. And suddenly things started to balance again. But I learned that again many moons ago. I went through grad school. I got the gray hair. I'm well past college. But luckily, I was able to learn that relatively early on. If you identify as introvert or if you feel overwhelmed by social situations and you feel like you're back to yourself, then maybe there's a certain amount of social energy, kind of like the battery pack that you have. And when that energy gets low, then you start to not feel good. It might be not social anxiety, but just feeling anxious where you're kind of like you're uncomfortable, like you're wearing an uncomfortable shirt. That's what it feels like for me. And it's like, I just need fresh air. I just need to get out of here for a minute. And that works for me. Um, I was just talking to my best friend about this where, you know, my family and I just went traveling and there's four of us and we're traveling and we're in a hotel room. We're all kind of on top of each other. And that was really tough for me. I think it was tough for everybody. You know, but I think it was particularly tough for me just because I'm an introvert. Maybe it was tough for my eldest, too. And so just having that space and finding that space and that space could be found through um, brief meditations. It could be uh, walks that you, you get a breath of fresh air, what have you. It could just be you going to the bathroom for a few minutes and kind of getting yourself together. Whatever process happens to work with you. That's the thing with being an introvert is that you need to create those times and those energies to be able to move forward, you know? And I think that's part of the thing. Thank you. I appreciate the love. But, you know, but that's part of the challenge there is you finding a way to make space, you know? Yes. And you've had enough peopling. Love the term. Exactly. You've had enough peopling. I got to get out of here. <laughs> now, how I manage that which I think is really important is I will literally schedule time, literally schedule a time to be by myself. And I'll get into that a little bit more. Let me go ahead and share some of the tools 
before I get more abstract, let me share some of the tools that, um, that work really well for me. Um, one good place to start would be Susan Cain's TED Talk. It was one of the first TED Talks that I saw and I actually saw her in person. It was actually the first TED I went to. It had to be 2011, 2012. I want to say 2012. Her first TED Talk, I was in the audience. I was blown away. And uh, her and I have connected after the fact. And I so appreciate her work. This is what started it all. Susan Cain, The Power of Introverts. If you're looking to go deeper on this topic, please start with this really short TED Talk. I want to say 12 minutes, 13 minutes around 10, just over 10 minutes long. It is absolutely worth your time. The stuff I'm talking about a lot, she's like, you know, the, the, the mother of this, as far as bringing this to the, to the, uh, to modern consciousness and changing the discussion as far as what exactly introvert is. And that's really a key part of it. As you go deeper, it's worth checking out her book, Quiet. Quiet by Susan Kane, fantastic book. She talks about her experiences and similar to what I talk about, because I think she's just a few years older than me. So similar, we're of a similar generation where we were quiet growing up, <laughs> hence the term. We were quiet going up. And then at the same time, it's like people keep mistaking that as, you know, as being shy, you know, as again, like those are two separate things. Her book talks about that, talks about personal experiences with that. And she's created a whole community, whole community around this concept. Fantastic. She has another book out called Bittersweet. I'm just getting into it now, but it's been highly recommended. It's actually an Oprah books pick right now. So for the Oprah book club, I think that's what she's naming it now. So congrats, Susan. I'm proud of your work. And I'm, I'm happy to, uh, to be able to see it from the beginning as far as you coming out a dozen years ago. Um, another book that actually might help you on your way is one called Fascinate by Sally Hogshead. I have a hardcover copy over here, but I think maybe one of my kids grabbed it or something. <laughs> I was reorganizing my office and, you know, I'm glad my kids are curious about books, but they always go missing. Go figure. It's a, I guess it's a good thing. I'll appreciate that later. Fascinate, though. It's an interesting book because her main thing, if I remember her background correctly, she's actually from marketing. And she talks about how different brands, follow me, if you're creative, you might bristle a little bit at the idea of a brand, but identity, let's call it identity, because she would call it brand, let's call it identity. Every single company or product has, has an identity, like I have an identity, like, like literally darn near everything that I have here, I made. So this t-shirt is, it's the other side, is the Build From Now t-shirt. This is actually available at DamonBrown.net. This mug was made by my wife as well as by my um, my cover designer, Beck Loss. Shout out to Beck. The three of us collaborated and made this mug for the book, Bring Your Worth, that came out three, four years ago, which is, of course, the name of this show. That's part of my brand where it's like, right, and I'm talking to you on my YouTube channel, my channel. That's part of my brand. That's part of my identity. So me how you receive me and how you connect with me and how I connect with y'all is ideally authentic because everything that I have is homemade and from me. So from the bottom to the top, like this is, this is Damon. And for some folks, I'm not going to be for y'all, but for other folks, if I resonate with y'all, it's going to be deep just because you know that every single product, every single thing I did career remix partnership with Barnes and Noble all my other books are from my own publishing imprint. Like, think about that. Everyone has some type of identity, not just who you are when you wake up in the world or wake up, wake up in the world, wake up in the morning, appear in the world, but also how you connect with other people and what you want to share with other people. I want to share that you can do it on your own. You can absolutely get support, but you do not need to go to a traditional publisher. You don't need to get VC money. You don't need to necessarily do all those things. I'm good friends with VCs and I'm super cool with the editors and publishers in New York. Nothing wrong with them, but you don't necessarily have to take that route. That's all I'm here for. Fascinate works really well because she breaks it down. I want to say it's 20 different pieces. It might be more than that, that these pieces kind of make up what our personality is. And two or three of these pieces are dominant. 
And so if you find out what those dominant pieces are, then you figure out how you can best show up in the world and still be yourself. I know one of my dominant pieces is explaining things and talking, ironically being an introvert, <laughs> but that's one of my strengths. And so one of the ways that I get energy is actually teaching other people. So I'm getting way more energy talking to you and helping you get to the next level than I would having a, a banal small talk. Small talk, it drains me. It, it tires me out. It makes me want to go to sleep. But that's something that's talked about in the book, Fascinate. And so if you can unlock that, that it makes it much easier to go forward with that. One of the book pick, pick one book book pick, man, that's a hard 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 combination of words. I would recommend it's sparked by Jonathan Fields. I actually do have a physical copy here. I was able to keep it away from my kids. <laughs> Shout out to Jonathan. <laughs> and um, fascinating book. Uh, not to make too much of a pun over fascinating, but fascinating book came out just about a year or two ago. I say about a year and a half ago. Really good book. Very similarly, it talks about all the different personality traits that you might have and how you have a dominant one and you have a like a secondary, slightly recessive one and they make up a certain thing. Sure enough, one of my traits is teaching. And so that ends up being a strength of mine. And so I'm a public speaker where I talk about the stuff I'm talking about right now. I'm a business coach. I have my private practice. I'm an editorial consultant. And I've been a longtime author and journalist. I'm usually talking about complex, sensitive topics and explaining them to other people. Makes sense. I believe the identity is guru, if I remember correctly. But there's several different identities. If you understand these identities and you're able to, to get it together in that way, then you're able to appear in a stronger way. And I think that's really important as far as being an introvert is figuring out how you want to appear in the world, right? Because if you don't know how you're going to appear in the world, then it makes it a little bit harder to, to manage that energy. So one of the questions that I'm often asked, and this goes back to a recent episode I had um, about social media and how you can be off of social media and actually still make an impact on the world, right? And that is, how can I build a community as an introvert? People feel as though they have to be like a, like a politician, right? <laughs> they have to you know, um, hug babies and uh, what is it? Uh, kiss babies and, and shake hands or shake babies and kiss hands, as they say, right? That's actually not true. You have to connect with the community, but you can connect with them in your own way. One of the things that worked out well for me is being intentional with when and how I connect. I have my own coaching business because I didn't want to be working for someone else and then them saying, okay, you have to meet with this client at this time. Now, so my consulting work, yes, that's a requirement of it. And even some of my editorial work, because I'm a freelance writer, editorially, it's like, yeah, I need to interview per this person at this time. But I have a ridiculous amount of autonomy. One of those things is because I like being a leader of my own business. But another part of it is that I can actually manage my energy. Like you might be able to tell, I have a, a little bit of a sinus allergy thing going on because the weather has been crazy here in Vegas. We've had rain all week. So, you know, I, I've had like a stuffy nose, not a cold, but kind of like the stuffy allergy kind of stuff. I've been drinking tea all morning. I was able to manage my time based on that. Now, what's interesting as far as being an introvert, and I welcome your questions below. But this is something that's come up a lot. We often don't prioritize that part of our health, whether we're extrovert or introvert, but particularly for introverts, I'm speaking to you. If we have a dentist appointment, we'll say, okay, I have to be at the dentist appointment at 11 a.m. That's probably gonna be till noon. I'll get back home at 12.30. All right, I'm gonna set aside this hour and a half, two hours, just in case things go wrong. But you're about to blow, blow your top you're stressed out because people are in your face, you're socially exhausted, and you actually have the opportunity to go somewhere. And you don't. We don't weigh those healths the same. And so part of building community is knowing what your boundaries are. I personally experienced this recently because as some of you all know, if you've been following the channel for a while, it went from a few hundred regular viewers 
to recently it hit five figures worth of regular viewers. Within a short period of time, it was three figures worth of regular viewers, and then suddenly it was five figures worth of regular views. We're talking tens of thousands. That shift, any career shift, requires you being defensive and thoughtful as far as you take care of yourself. That's required. Otherwise, you're going to burn yourself out. And so as introverts, we really need to be thoughtful as far as how we build community because we want to build a community that can partially at least sustain itself. Part of that is strategically being thoughtful about our time. Another part of that is figuring out how we're going to spend our energy. Where are we going to spend our energy? Are we going to have a TV show three times a week like I do? Or are we going to be on the road most, most of the time as some of my colleagues do and they're doing keynotes three, four or five times a week? Um, are you going to have a radio show twice a day? Are you going to be having several coaching sessions, which some of my uh, coaching clients are coaches. So we've talked about that. Are you going to have 10 coaching sessions in it uh, every day? Good money, but is that something that's sustainable? You can't do all of it, though. For me, I'm very selective as far as the people that I coach. But I show up for this, this channel three times a week and have done so for about two and a half years now. So being thoughtful and strategic about what you do. One of the tools that really helps me out a lot is Calendly. I know some of y'all that are watching are into it too. Really simple app, really simple platform. I wish I came up with it because I sure as heck needed it <laughs> when I started my career many, many years ago. Calendly is this simple. Someone says, hey, I want to have a meeting with you. You're like, bet. Sounds wonderful. Here's my link. Click on the link. And then all the times that you have available on your schedule are on the calendar and they pick one. They pick one, it goes onto your calendar, you're done. Now, the thing is, here's the secret. Here's the secret sauce of it. You actually have to put in your calendar that you're not going to have any meetings. Ah, this goes back to what I was talking about. That's why I'm bringing up Calendly. You have to have the discipline. <laughs> First several months, I use, I've been using Calendly for years. The first several months, I was like, excuse me. I was like, okay, I'm going to go ahead and use this calendar app and it'll be fine. And people were just hopping in my calendar. And I was like, I don't know if I like this. And I was like, wait a second. They don't know what the boundaries are. And so I went in there, I changed the settings. And I was like, I'm going to go and do a particular way, right? I'm going to go and do a particular way. And I'm only going to be available for these particular hours because I got to pick up my kids. But before I pick up my kids, I need to go ahead and get dinner ready. So let me buffer an hour in there. Like little details like that, it forced me to work on that. And it forced me to literally have introvert time. Again, I was just traveling with my family. So I had a day or a period of time when we got back where I was just like, I just put in my calendar busy. <laughs> I could be busy taking a nap. I could be busy catching up with my family and then unpacking everything. I could be busy just drinking my coffee. As simple as that. True introvert time. Do you know what I mean? This forces you to really look at your schedule because if you're in a, in a season or a period of time where you're really popular or a lot of people want your time, and you have know, setting up the Calendly link <laughs> and then you don't put boundaries on it, it's going to be a mess. It's going to be a problem. So it forces you, it makes the unconscious conscious. Again, shout out to Young again. It makes the unconscious conscious and you're like, oh, wow, I have no time for myself because my schedule is way open. Maybe I need some boundaries. Food for thought, right? Another app I would highly recommend, I've recommended over the last few weeks, but it's been really pertinent to what we've been talking about in the live shows. In the live shows, every Wednesday at 1, 11 p.m. Um, is Meet Edgar. Um, as I talked about, Meet Edgar is a um, female founder. Laura, shout out to her. She's done fantastic work over the last few years. The basic app is, again, super simple, extremely powerful. If you're gonna get on social, uh, TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, you know, you know the vibes. You can put all your social posts in here. 
And then you could schedule them for certain times, which, you know, Buffer, Hootsuite, all those would do that for you. Fine, whatever. Here's the magic, though. I've been really into Meet Edgar for several years because they will actually randomize and post your stuff at certain times forever. So I have a column with Ink Magazine. You can go to ink.com and look up my name. I have the YouTube channel, Just Cross. I think it's the, this is the 320th episode. I could plug all the different content in there. Going back, this show started in 2020. So I can take my first, second, third, fourth episodes, all the way up to my 320th right now, put them into Meet Edgar, and then it can just go. But you know what that means? Right? You know what that means? That means that I can just go ahead and be on my merry way, not have to worry about being connected and being social all the time. I can actually have my introvert time, have my quiet time, and that stuff is still churning. From a business standpoint, this makes perfect, perfect sense too, because I have columns. Um, I started my ink column in 2017, I think, so a while ago. Sometimes me and Edgar will share something from 2017, 2018, I'm not exaggerating, and so, suddenly someone will get that insight from what I was talking about five years ago. They might, it might show uh, one of my earliest episodes from again, uh, late 2020. And they're like, wow, this episode really resonated with me. Because the people that you connect with back to community, the people that you connect with now are gonna be different than the people you connect with five years from now or the people you connected with five, five years ago. In other words, like I was talking about, the amount of people that are watching this show now is exponentially higher than it was when the show, obviously when the show first started in 2020. And so me sharing some of the content with y'all makes perfect sense because y'all weren't there back in 2020 in some cases. And so I think it's so important to have that, that insight and that discussion and not have to manually handle it all the time. As I told, to, as I uh, expressed to a colleague of mine, building community I found isn't necessarily about micromanaging the garden. It's about planting the seeds and then letting them grow on their own. And so hopefully this show is part of that. Hopefully the discussions on the, and the ink column over the past few years are part of that. Hopefully the newsletter with the feedback I've been getting at joindamon.me is part of that. So I think there's ways that you can build community without frankly burning yourself out. Uh, the last comment that I got, and feel free to put your Q&As down there too. Uh, the last comment I got um, is the advantage of being an introvert. And I think being so-called outgoing and so, and so forth, we obviously know the advantages of that because they're talked about so much, particularly here in, in Western culture. Being an introvert though, there's actually a lot of advantages to that too. Number one, we tend to be a little bit more strategic because we only have so much social energy. So we need to be very thoughtful about what our next move is going to be. Another thing that has come up quite a bit, and this has been based on research as well, not just me, not just me making up stuff, is that we also tend to be better listeners because oftentimes we're talking less. Again, because of the social energy. And so the responses that we have tend to be a little bit more thoughtful um, and a little bit more uh, like thought out, like uh, again, this, the strategy, the, the nuance, it, they tend to be more nuanced. The third thing, and I found this personally, is that we can ironically not be very powerful public speakers because it takes a lot more energy for us to get on stage, a lot more energy for us to speak. So when we say something, we sure as hell mean it. And there's a certain amount of gravitas and power with that. We're, we're never going to be talking just to be talking. It's like, no, we're talking for a certain intention. As an introvert, the best thing you can do is figure out what that main intention is. What's your main purpose? Why are you speaking? If that intention is pure, then that energy will be strong. I don't even mean that from a universe or a spiritual standpoint. I mean, just literally, if you 
have the strongest intention as far as helping other people or if what you have to say is going to help elevate the other people in the room or the other person you're talking to, there's going to be a certain amount of power and strength that you're going to have that other people, introvert or extrovert or whatever, will never have. That's one of the reasons why I love public speaking. That's why I love, actually, I help coach public speakers is because when you have that little spark and that turns into a flame, there's so much power in that. It's not the matter of being the, the best public speaker, being the best leader, being the best entrepreneur. It's about having that purity of intention. And when you have that purity of intention, then stuff tends to get out of the way and whatever power or intent you have tends to come through clear. Again, whether you're an extrovert, introvert, blue, green, whatever, <laughs> there's a certain power in that. So it all goes back to the intention. And as introverts, we're more likely to be have clarity of that intention because it takes us so much energy to speak up, right? Hopefully that all makes sense to y'all. At least it makes sense in my mind. <laughs> For after the show, after this, uh, a great uh, follow-up, dessert, I forget the term. I want to say aperitif, but that's not the word. I don't, I don't want to offend the, the, the food folks out there, the gastronomers. I can't even say the word. But a good follow-up to this afterwards, how to organize your life right now. It's about prioritizing your life. It's pretty short. It's about six, seven minutes, one of the traditional episodes. In fact, this episode... Um, probably about two years old. So it was one of the earlier episodes of the show, but it's been very popular and I've shared it quite a bit with my coaching clients because part of being an introvert, at least a healthy introvert, let's make it clear. Part of it is understanding what your priority is. Like I, like I alluded at earlier, I'm doing this show, but then I'm also not on the radio 20 times a day. And I'm also not doing in-person meetings and I'm also not, growing this massive coaching practice. And I'm also not on the road doing keynotes because all those things require social energy. And I know only have so much. This will help you clarify and figure out what exactly your main intention is. Again, my name is Damon Brown. You're watching the Bring Your Wear Show. It's every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 11 p.m. 1, 11 p.m., not 11 p.m. No, I'm asleep. 1, 11 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, Vegas time. Every Wednesday, it's a live show. You subscribe for free at the Bring Your Word Show at youtube.com slash Brown Damon. And that little question mark and all that stuff. If you just want to watch the show, see if you're into it before you subscribe, go ahead and just do youtube.com slash Brown Damon or click the links below. It's free. As far as I can tell, it'll always be free. I like to keep it free as, as long as possible. So we'll run with that. And my newest book is Career Remix. Get the gig you want based on the skills you've got. Yeah, thanks for coming through. Until next time, remember you can always bring your worth that you always build from now. Take care.